Hi, everyone. I'm Stacey Heisman with Military Spouse Magazine, and today I have a special guest with me. Her name is Jessica Stremmer. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Hi, doing well. Thank you. I want to make sure I got your last name right. I didn't do that before we talked, so I just want to make sure I got that right. You did. Excellent. All right. Well, Jessica's joined us today. She's a military spouse, actually a Navy spouse. Am I right? Marine Corps. Oh, even better. <laughs> Even better. And I say that only because we were, I was reading something about Navy a few minutes ago. So I apologize for that. So you are a uh, Marine Corps spouse. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah. So we've been stationed in California for about 12 years now. Um, we're both originally from Wisconsin. And we have two daughters and a dog. And um, we just, you know, love, love spending time outdoors as a family, taking advantage of the weather in California and just exploring as much as possible. So 12 years in California, that's pretty impressive. I don't know many military families that get to stay 12 years in any state. Yeah, there's a couple of us that have been here this long and we're all moving this year. <laughs> <laughs> and you're all moving. Okay, well, great. And the reason why you were talking today is because you wrote a fantastic little book and I want to hear about it. Um, we're highlighting children book authors this month and I wanted, and you're one of our, the ones we're highlighting. So tell me a little bit about your book. So my debut um, picture book is called Great Carrier Reef, and it's going to be published in the summer of 2023 um, with Holiday House Publishing. Okay. And so, yeah, so the way that picture books work is um, I actually sold the manuscript back in 2021, but they take a couple years to produce. There's editing that goes involved with the manuscript. Um, and then, you know, copy editing, and then they obviously have to hire an illustrator and they take their time to do the illustrations and there's edits on that side. Um, and then it takes actually quite a long time to produce the book, market the book and get it ready for sale. So usually from start to finish a couple of years. So mine is still about a year away. About a year away. Well, it sounds, tell, okay. So that sounds really <laughs> exciting. Um, a picture book. Tell me the age and you know, who is this book for? Tell me a little bit about what the book is about and who is the yeah. book written for? So, um, the Great Carrier Reef is the story of the USS Oriskany, um, which was an aircraft carrier, and its transition from an aircraft carrier to an artificial um, coral reef. So the ship was actually um, a very highly decorated ship that, as all ships do, end up going into retirement. And um, after a few times, they were trying to figure out if they wanted to scrap it or sell it or what they were going to do with the ship. And then um, some scientists in Florida actually had the idea of sinking it to make it an um, artificial reef. And it's actually the largest artificial reef, um, you know, in the world. Um, so the book just follows their transition uh, or the, yeah, the, the ship's transition of really just being stripped down. And um, for me, it was the identity. The ship is the main character in the book. And um, you're following it as its identity is changing. And it, and it journeys once again, you know, in its final leg, its final destination. And there's this big culminating scene where the ship is sunk. And um, it's really fun then, you know, the, the last part of the book is just watching um, as the ship comes to life as an actual coral reef. So I would say really this, the audience for this book is kids all the way up through adults. Um, it's narrative nonfiction. And so with narrative nonfiction, you're telling a story. You're, you're, you know, versus let's say expository where you're kind of telling different facts about a certain thing. This is a narrative story. Like I said, you're following the journey of the ship. Um, and so it can be used, you know, with classrooms to explore um, different ecosystems. You can use it, you know, just for your own fun reading. Like I said, the age limit really picture books are for kids, but they're really meant to be read by adults to kids. They're not, you know, independent early readers. Um, so it's got a lot of rereadability in that, you know, you can um, glean a lot from either military history or the science side of it as you go through and read it. Okay, I just absolutely love the concept of it though. I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm I think it's a I think it's a picture book for adults because I love the idea that you kind of go through this metamorphosis with this ship and it turns into something in innate to something that's actually alive. I think I just, just, just love it. So um, you know, you're talking about how like the how long it takes for a book to get published. I I also am a, a published book author. I understand the process of it, but I don't know if readers out there, and that's a little bit about what your piece is about too, is how does a military spouse, someone who moves a lot, or maybe is just in one location doing one thing, you know, uh, for 12 years necessarily, that how do you get into book publishing? How hard, how hard was it for you to find someone? Yeah. So, um, 
publishing in itself is a beast. <laughs> no matter if you're writing for kids or you're writing for adults. Um, there are some people that choose to go the self-publishing route because um, for various reasons, you know, whether they don't, they're impatient or they um, just have a very niche niche book that they want to kind of pursue. But traditional publishing um, can take a long time. And really, SCBWI is a worldwide organization that is the best way to get started if you're curious about how to write books for kids. Because everybody has ideas, right? We're inspired maybe by our everyday life, maybe by things that our kids or family do. And we all said at some point, oh, I should write a book about this. Um, and everybody can write, but I think it takes time to really learn the skill and what makes a good book. And if you're reading books like Goodnight Moon um, that you know were from our childhood, they seem very basic and straightforward. And a lot of other picture books, they seem so easy. They're 500 words or less, um, but they're actually really, really difficult. And part of that too is also understanding what publishers are looking for and what type of books they're looking to bring into the market. So finding ways to um, become plugged into the kidlit writing community, like I said, SCBWI. Um, there's another one called Kidlit 411 that is a good resource. And um, there's Facebook groups. And I would say, you know, just start writing, jotting down your ideas and asking questions. And, you know, the kidlit community is extremely friendly and supportive. Um, I've met even, you know, some, actually we're moving to Okinawa and I was very, very worried about leaving my writing friends here in California because I have a lot of good friends that I've met just through writing. And um, I found somebody already that's in Okinawa that does picture book in middle grade. And so we've already scheduled, you know, our first lunch when I get there. Um, so I think the key really is to just dive in to learning the craft, you know, write a lot, uh, read a lot, read a lot of more current things. So you can get um, a lot of books through your library. A lot of them will do interlibrary loans. Um, get on the internet and you can search for, you know, what the top current picture books are in different genres, whether you like nonfiction or fiction, if you like humor, if you like SEL books. Um, there's, you know, just read a lot in your genre, try and write, try and get connected to different critique partners. And um, eventually, when you feel like you're ready, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna query agents. And that process is grueling. Um, I think I queried a couple, I had a couple dozen rejections, which is not very many. Um, and I can't remember, maybe I queried for only six months, but I've had friends that have been querying agents for a couple years. And it just takes time to find the right agent that connects with your work. Um, a lot of kidlet agents will represent picture books through young adult. Some of them just specialize in picture books. So researching to see what type of agent um, you're looking for and what type of books they represent. Sometimes you get rejected because the agent just doesn't know what editor they would try to sell your book to. Um, sometimes your books get rejected because they're just not good enough. You know, and I, I did that with my very first one. It was not ready to be queried. We all kind of make that mistake in the beginning. Um, but again, finding your community and getting LinkedIn and having people you can swap stories with. Um, and then eventually, if you're lucky and you do land your agent, you know, then your agent will take your book and they'll try to sell it to editors. And editors also have a whole list of things that they're looking for and certain tastes that they prefer and um, topics or ideas that they're trying to fill for their upcoming list. And like I said, they're usually thinking two years out. So right now, if you were trying to submit a book to an editor, um, it would be two years from now that they would be looking to actually publish it. Um, so you also kind of have to know all of this going into it, that it's a long, it's a long game. Um, but, you know, the, like I said, the writing community is extremely supportive and um, it's fun once you get started, you know? Yeah. And um, I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to think no. if there's anything else. <laughs> I, well, I, no, you actually, I mean, what you said was a, a, an, amazing amount of great information out there for any military spouse who is considering writing a book in the kidlet genre, which I think, um, and I love the fact that you touched on that some of picture books that we've read at our, our generation or even are still reading to our kids now look so simple, but really it it's not that easy. Um, I think what you said were great points and I think we'll go a long ways. What again, now tell us one more time the name of the book and when your book comes out. The name of the book is Great Carrier Reef, 
and it's debuting the summer of 2023, I believe July, but I don't have the exact date yet. Um, sure, sure. It's being published by Holiday House and you should be able to find it on Amazon um, or other, you know, online absolutely. retailers. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love this conversation because first of all, I, love, I, I write nonfiction. So to me, it's very like listening to someone come up with this wonderful story and envisioning a, a ship that becomes a carrier reef and through this. I mean, I just, I, I, I have fallen in love with the story oh, thank you. by itself. And so I always am in awe of those who can do fiction because I'm just such an, I'm just a nonfiction gal. So, and I just, and you, people like you inspire me because I, we need folks like you to tell these amazing stories for our kids to understand some of the great experiences that are out there. So Jessica, so grateful you were able to spend your time with me. Thank you for carving out a 10 minutes and sharing your book and a little bit about you and your life and your family and your children. Good luck on your PCS because we've all been there. We know it's hard and moving overseas, I'm just letting you know, as everyone out there can attest, is one of the hardest moves you'll ever make, but worth every single second, so. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jessica. All right, for Military Spouse Magazine, I'm Stacey Heisman and we'll see you next time. <laughs>